بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. The in the first session we spoke about the first set of verses in which Allah Azza wa Jal gave an oath and then about uh, with uh, by a set of angels with different descriptions to confirm that the day of judgment uh, will happen and it gave the, the following set of uh, verses uh, gave some details about the day of judgment. Allah Azza wa Jal then moves to something totally different. Allah Azza wa Jal then moves to uh, display for us the story of Musa and Fir'aun. The story of Musa and Fir'aun is the story which was mentioned the most from amongst all stories of prophets and messengers, the story of Musa with Fir'aun is the one which was mentioned the most in the Quran. And in, in, in the uh, stories, Allah Azza wa Jal tells us how he destroyed this tyrant. He was the tyrant of his time. And Musa alayhi salatu wasalam with his followers were pressed. Now, why is it that the story of Musa and Fir'aun is repeated so often in the Quran, more than any other uh, surah? Well, one of the reasons is that it is mentioned, and remember, this is a Meccan surah, a time of weakness. No state is, is established yet, right? So the believers were oppressed. Some of them were tortured, some were killed. The Prophet ﷺ was physically harmed, was attacked, was belied, was mocked, right? So Allah is telling the story of Musa with Fir'aun to Muhammad ﷺ as a way of consoling him and the companions and that you, Muhammad وسلم, and your companions are not the first ones. Messengers before you and their followers before you, before yours, were oppressed, were wronged, were tortured, were persecuted. So, this relaxes the heart to know that you're not the only one who suffers in this path. And another reason is that there are many similarities between the story of Musa and the story of Muhammad uh, Musa and his followers السلام, and Muhammad السلام, and his followers were both tortured, persecuted, harmed. Both messengers were forced to migrate from their land to another land, and many other similarities between the, uh, the two stories. And therefore, it is a message to Muhammad وسلم, to take lessons from that story. It's a story that started and ended. So take lessons because it's similar to your case. Uh, it is a means of steadfastness to Muhammad وسلم, and uh, his followers. Uh, and the term Fir'aun, we have Fir'aun in all times, in all ages. And Fir'aun is a description, actually, after the real Fir'aun. It's a description given to anyone, any tyrant who rejects the truth, who rejects the message of Allah Azza wa Jal, who opposes the messengers or those who follow the truth by force who faces them by force and harms them as well physically. The Prophet ﷺ, and this for those who call for Allah Azza, to, to the path of Allah Azza wa Jal, this is a lesson for them to take as a means of making them steadfast in their path, in their mission, calling people to Allah Azza wa Jal, until the Day of Judgment. Uh, Ibn Abba, Ibn Mas'ud and this is uh, 
reported by Ahmed, rahimahullah, uh, said that on the day of Badr, when I conveyed, it's a long story, I'm just going to summarize it. He said, when I conveyed the news to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that Abu Jahl was killed, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allahu, alladhi la ilaha illahu, by Allah, with whom there is no other deity. Meaning, are you saying that this really happened? He repeated this question thrice, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when Ibn Mas'ud confirmed, he said he got up sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and started walking with me to the body of Abu Jahl. And then when he reached, subhanallah, he said, Alhamdulillahi alladhi akhzaka. I thank Allah who disgraced you, O oh, you enemy of Allah. And then he addressed the companions around him, alayhi salatu wasalam, and he said, Hadha kana fir'awnu hadihi al-ummah. This man was the fir'awn of this ummah, of this nation. Just like fir'awn was the fir'awn of Musa and his people, this is our fir'awn. Another reason for the repetition of the story of Musa and Fir'aun is the end of Fir'aun. And how Allah Azza wa Jal destroyed him in a miraculous manner by splitting the sea and then drowning him and his soldiers, the entire army. Which descri was described by some of the Mufassireen when in different uh, positions in the Quran. They said they had blocked the horizon as huge as the army was. This is in Surah Al Shu'ara. In that, they say that when the followers of Musa looked behind, the horizon was blocked as huge as the army of Fir'aun was. This entire huge, humongous army was drowned by a miracle of Allah Azza wa Jal, by the striking of the water with the staff of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, and it split, they passed, they saved, They're, they were saved, and then they followed them in Allah. This destruction, this killing of Fir'aun and his people, is a lesson for those who oppose the truth and its people. And it's a means of comfort and steadfastness for the followers of the truth. Saying, remain steadfast, be with Allah, adhere to what Allah is commanding you to do, and He'll take care of your enemy. Just be on good terms with Him. He'll take care of you. This is a message to me and you. It's not just to Musa and his followers or Muhammad sallallahu and his, his followers radiallahu anhu. Allah says, هَلْ أَتَاكَ حَدِيثُ مُوسَى Has there reached you the story of Musa? This is a, a, a statement addressing Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Have you, has it reached you that story of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam? إِذْ نَادَاهُ رَبُّهُ بِالْوَادِ الْمُقَدَّسِ طُوَى When his Lord called to him in the sacred valley of Tuwa. Tuwa is the place. <coughs> Excuse me. It is the place in which Allah Azza wa Jal spoke to Musa. Or where Musa was, alayhi salatu wasalam, and Allah Azza wa Jal spoke to him. Now this verse proves two things. Number one. That Allah spoke to Musa. Number two, the quality of nida, nada, if nadahu. So Allah calls upon His creation, right? Idhab ila Fir'auna innahu taqa. Go to Fir'aun. Indeed, he has transgressed. Now Fir'aun has transgressed and we will say what he did and what he said. 
Allah is telling Musa, go and forbid him from what he's doing, from the shirk, from the tyranny he's in. And be lenient with him. And this was uh, the detail of how to speak to him was given in Surah Taha. When Allah spoke to Musa and Harun, فَقُولَ لَهُ قَوْلَ اللَّيْنَا Speak to him in a, in a soft tone. Speak to him softly, kindly. So he would not have the excuse of being spoken to harshly and aggressively. So Allah is telling uh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa that he addressed Musa, telling him to go to Fir'aun, who has transgressed, and call him, and forbid him from uh, continuing to, to transgress. فَقُلْ هَلْ لَكَ إِلَىٰ أَن تَزَكَّى And say to him, O Musa, would you be willing to purify yourself by believing, by accepting the message, by submitting to the Creator, and obeying Him, and therefore purify your soul and your heart by, by the virtue of your faith, after it was an evil soul? وَأَهْدِيَكَ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ فَتَخْشَىٰ and let me guide you to your Lord so you would fear. Let me clarify to you what are the actions that please your Lord and what displease Him. What is the path of obedience and what is the path of disobedience so that your heart becomes fearful of the Creator and therefore becomes submissive to Him and to His commandments. So Musa, and he, Musa that is, showed him the greatest sign. Musa alayhi salatu was was supported by different miracles. One of them, the ayat, the, an ayatul kubra here is referring to his stick, which he threw and it turned into a huge snake, right? So Musa showed him that. And he pulled his hand out and it became radiant in front of his eyes and his followers' eyes, right? Now, these signs are sufficient for anyone who's sincere, who's seeking the truth, to believe. When I see something miraculous in front of me by someone who's claiming to be sent by the Creator, then this is a sign of his honesty, sincerity, and truthfulness. So I should submit. Instead, what did Fir'aun do? فَكَذَّبَ وَعَصَى But he denied and disobeyed. He denied the truth and disobeyed the commands of his Lord and disbelieved and did not react in a positive manner neither inwardly nor outwardly to the message of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. You see, something very important here to point out. Mere knowledge that does not necessarily lead you to believe. He knew that this is true. I mean, he's seeing something with his own eyes. He's not being told a story. He is watching something physical take place in front of his eyes, right? So this is knowledge, but that doesn't always lead to belief and submission and obedience. Uh, the clearest example, an obvious example, is the example of shaitan. Shaitan knew that Allah Azza wa Jal was the creator and knew that when he threatens, he punishes. And when he promises, he rewards. Yet, out of arrogance, not ignorance, but out of arrogance, though he knew, so knowledge existed, he disobeyed, was doomed, and was doomed as a result. Then, he turned his back, striving and plotting against Musa, that is. 
he exerted all efforts possible to challenge the truth, to oppose Musa alayhi salatu wasalam and fight his uh, message. فَحَشَرَ فَنَادَى And he gathered his people and called out aloud so that he would be heard. So he gathered his magicians to challenge Musa alayhi salatu wasalam with what he claimed to be magic. And he called upon his people and called upon his army as a way of terrifying Musa alayhi salatu wasalam and those who think, who only think to follow him will be scared. And again, these are lessons that if you face hardship when you're on the path of Allah Azza wa don't give in to threats. Don't give up the path of Allah because of fear. You might be harmed, so be it. Others were harmed much more than you were or you will be. فَقَالَ أَنَا رَبُّكُمُ الْأَعْلَى He reached a state of tyranny and disbelief that cannot be exceeded by anyone. He said, I am your most exalted Lord. He did not just be like Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. He did not just deny his message. He did not settle for plotting against the truth and its people. No, he went way beyond all of that. He stripped the qualities, the attributes that are only for Allah and attributed them to himself. أَنَا رَبُّكُمُ الْأَعْلَى The most exalted Lord. Subhanallah. فَأَخَذَهُ اللَّهُ نَكَالَ الْآخِرَةِ وَالْأُولَى So Allah sees them in exemplary punishment for the last and the first transgression. Allah Azza wa Jal punished him and the punishment of Allah Azza wa Jal is painful. And the punishment of Allah Azza wa Jal can be in this dunya, in this worldly life, and it can be delayed to the hereafter, depending on the case and depending on the will of Allah Azza wa Jal. So Allah Azza wa Jal punished him and made him an example for those after him, for those who think, whoever think to go against Allah Azza wa Jal, they have a life example. A life example that will exist until the day of judgment. Allah Azza wa Jal drowned him but preserved his body. Why? So he will be a sign. A reminding sign to all of those who think of going against Allah Azza wa Jal. Whether believers or disbelievers. If you think of disobeying Allah, then remember the ability of Allah to drown and kill that tyrant and his entire army. To remind yourself, if Allah can do that, then He can do much more against me. And I'm only one person. So, Allah Azza wa Jal said, for the fa first and the last transgression, the, uh, the last transgression is his claim of being the Lord. And the first one is his oppression to the children of uh, Israel. إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَعِبْرَةً إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَعِبْرَةً لِمَنْ يَخْشَى Indeed, in that is a lesson and a warning for whoever would fear Allah. Whoever fears Allah Azza wa Jal should take heed 
before he rejects, before he disobeys Allah Azza wa Jal, before he challenges Allah, because the essence of disobedience is actually a challenge by the slave to his Lord. Allah says, do, and you say, no, I'm not going to do. Who are you challenging? You're challenging Allah. Allah says, refrain, and you say, no, I'm going to do. A'udhu Billah. One of us feels shy saying this to his father, to his older brother, to his uncle or aunt, let alone Allah. Subhanallah. How can anyone dare say this by words or action? Because one might say, I'm not saying anything. Yeah, but you're doing something that indicates and implies that challenge against Allah. The uh, story of Musa and Fir'aun highlights uh, a very important uh, point. Is that tyrants, those who reject the truth, always when they fail in their uh, challenge against the people, people of the truth and the followers of the truth, when they lose the debate, they resort to force. As Fir'aun said, I will kill your males and keep your females alive. I will cut your arms and, and, and legs from different opposite parts. This is a threat. But the true followers remain steadfast. As the magicians who believed in Musa alayhi salat, said to Fir'aun when he threatened them, they said, اقضي ما أنت قاضٍ إنما تقضي هذه الحياة الدنيا Do whatever you want to do. All you can do is something related to this, this worldly life. What you're going to do is going to be executed in this life, but then what we're seeking is something after that. And this is, this is something that's common between all followers of falsehood, all those who deny the truth and reject it, all those who plot against it, when they fail in debates, they resort to force and physical abuse and harm. Now, Fir'aun did three things. First, he denied and belied. Then, he disobeyed. Then he started plotting against the mission as per the verses in this surah in particular, other than the other details given in different surahs. And then he started plotting to make the mission of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam a failure and that he would not be able to continue. With this scene, uh, the story of Musa uh, concludes uh, it came after Allah swore that the day of judgment will happen. And then it, the, the following verses after that will go back to uh, the day of judgment and cosmic signs proving the uh, lordship and divinity of Allah Azza wa Jal and his ability to create and resurrect. We will address that. In the following session, insha'Allah. So we will conclude now. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.